happy Saturday. Hopefully you all are doing well. All right, all right, all right. Come on in, everyone. Come on in, come on in. Thank you so much for being here. I clean my glasses and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, Mill Sister, ML Sister. I do my best, everybody. Come on in. We'll take attendance. And then we're going to do a dining documentary. It's been a while since we've done one of those. Get myself together. All right. Hello, 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 everyone. All right. So let me go ahead and introduce myself to anybody new here. Hi. I am Maggie, your substitute teacher. Welcome. Usually I'm welcoming you to a struggle cooking class, but today I'm not cooking. Uh, we're going to do a dining documentary. It's been a while since we've done one of these. And whenever I am not in the kitchen cooking, believe me, I'm still eating somewhere. Y'all have told me, okay, okay, we're working on the weight. Um, and last night I went out to an exquisite restaurant called Chops Lobster Bar. Uh, this is my second time going there. Uh, apparently, it's very popular in the Atlanta area. So we're going to talk about what I ate. We're going to review the menu. We're going to look at my pictures. And um, I'm going to give you all a little bit of food review. I'm going to give you all a little bit of etiquette. I'm going to give you all a little bit of relationship. I used to keep everything very separate, but look, at this point, it's all blending together. Um, so yeah, I'm not a professional chef. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm not an etiquette teacher. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a relationship expert. I'm just an older woman who uh, has had a life experience, and I like sharing it with you all. If you think that it would be helpful, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, everybody. So let's take attendance and then we're going to get started. So if you are new to my dining documentaries, the first hour, I pull up the website. We take a look at the menu. We talk about what you would eat, what I would eat. Uh, we learn about the restaurant together. And then in the second hour, I actually go through my pictures and video with you all so you all can see my experience and then give me your feedback as per usual um, in the chat. I see you 10 plus sounds. He says you are a professional mom. Mom. I'm a professional mom. You know, when I think of professional, I think you do it for a living. That means you support yourself. And uh, last I checked, these kids ain't paying no bills, but that's okay. That's my, um, my greatest joy and my greatest honor is being a boy mom. I did another podcast interview this morning and uh We'll see if uh, if they hop on, but uh, in another week or so, you all will see, excuse me, another Apple um, podcast where you can learn a little bit more about Maggie. But sit back, relax, get a beverage. I have some water here in a glass. As we know, we always drink out of a glass, ladies. We want to be elegant. Don't drink out of a bottle or drink out of a can if you can avoid it. It's much more elegant. And then you'll take small silent sips. Okay. So I got to be able to, um, to practice that. All right. So let's take attendance over here on TikTok. I see Perry says, I love being a boy mom too. Hello. We have Delisha in the house. Tanya joined, Denise joined. Um, let's see, we've got Harriet. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Humble, Renee. Um, and then let's go on over to Instagram. Let's see who we have here. We have MLS sister, Prince Chucks, those Barry Doe, uh, Zulu, Forever Ash, Keith Dandridge, A. Neely, Praying uh, M. Anybody on Instagram and anybody on TikTok, I will be sharing my screen. So if you want to see the pictures and or video, you can come to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch and uh, you'll be able to see in the screen share. If not, you can just sit back and relax and listen. All right, so let us take attendance and see who we have here. We have Linda with the love notes. Hello, my dear. Thank you so much for being here. As always, y'all know who we have here. Look at that thumbnail. We've got Lauren F. I'm always going to shout it out. 
The Maggie Meetup Cruise is boarding, which means if you all want to meet me on the high seas, this is open to anyone. You all know my channel is happy, wholesome, and family friendly. You can bring the kiddos if you want to. Um, Lauren is our professional travel agent in the community. I am not doing any of the work. She's handling everything. I am registered. I got my confirmation number. I am so looking forward to... Um, going to chops on Royal Caribbean. So you all can go to the website. If you want to reserve your room, we have 16 rooms blocked for our group. It's $200 to reserve your room. And then the balance is due September 1st and you can pay however you want to pay. Um, so yes, very, very excited. It'll be Royal Caribbean leaving Port Canaveral, which is close to Orlando, Florida, November 27th through December 1st. Um, it'll be um, after Thanksgiving and I'll have my birthday on the cruise. So I'll be bringing gifts for you all. We'll do a meet and greet, Q&A, whatever y'all want to do and eat. It's going to be so much fun. So you all can check that out. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Lauren my neighbor. And she says, good evening, all. We have Devali and Sense in the house. Hello, hello. We have Christina. She says, hi, Maggie. Hello, sweetheart. We have Randy Kay coming in with the hearts. Hello, my dear. Can't wait to see you soon. We have Marisha. She says, hello, Maggie. Thank you for bringing the flowers. As you can tell, I love flowers. So thank you for my roses. Randy says, magnificent Maggie with the flowers. Yes. Yeah, so these are Real roses, however, um, I think they're more of the, y'all know those uh, million roses or the ones that I got for Valentine's? They're real roses, but they treated them with some type of, I don't know, I want to say silicone, but that doesn't sound right. They put something on them so that they like stop in like slow motion or something like that. Y'all know, I don't know. But um. Yes. Thank you for my flowers. I appreciate when you all come in and bring me flowers. I love it. Thank you. We had 10 plus sounds. Y'all know who he is. He says you're a professional mom. Yeah, I guess so. I do that full time. All right. We have uh, 10 plus saying hello. Hello, sir. In the back. Marisha saying hello. Let me just check and see. Oh, yes. Lauren has dropped the link. You all can see this is the link for the Maggie Meetup cruise. If you want to meet me on the high seas. Ooh, Lauren says she made some updates on the website today. I should take a look. Very excited. And we have Kia G. She says, she says, hello, Maggie in class. Hope y'all are well. I am doing well. I'm feeling good. Honestly, I just scarfed down the last of my steak right before this. So I'm a little full, but it was so good. y'all. It was like Wagyu or Wagyu or something, beef, ribeye. Mm. <clears throat> so yes, we're going to talk all about it. And so, yeah, I'm just happy that you all are here. If you would like to be counted present, feel free to shout yourself out. If you prefer to watch from the clouds and you know who you are, you are most welcome here. And again, I will be sharing my screen. So let me pull up Chops Lobster Bar. I'm going to go to the website and I don't know if uh, any of you all have ever been. When I posted this yesterday, I got several comments. So uh, it is a steakhouse. Uh, so if you're here for the steak, you can put the steak emoji in the chat. If you're here for the lobster, you can put the lobster emoji in the chat. I had both because I'm greedy and y'all already know. We have Sharon Brown. She says, good evening, Maggie. Hello, my dear. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So let's see if we can pull this up, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, dear mama. I ain't good. I ain't good. And I, I really appreciate, um, because I do cook and I love to cook. It's rare that I go out to eat, but when I do, I really, really appreciate that. And especially ladies, if anybody takes you out to eat, show appreciation. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We are not entitled to anything. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen and let's go to the website first. All right. So if you all are able to see this, let me go here. Hello, hello. 
So you can see this is a group of restaurants. I actually have never been to the website before. So we're going to look at it together, y'all. Uh, so you can see here, this is a group of restaurants. I went to Chops Lobster Bar. So that's the one we're going to take a look at. Oh, I have been to the Atlanta Fish Market. It's been years since I went there. When I went to Atlanta Fish Market, Y'all know I'm a graduate of Spelman College, and they took us to Atlanta Fish Market for our graduation dinner, at least the chemistry department. I have a chemistry degree. Anyway, um, if you know anything about Georgia, we're pretty much landlocked here. So those of you all that love the water and love fresh seafood, that is a delicacy for us here. Uh, we do have really good cuisine in Atlanta. But um, most seafood is what frozen, you know, because they have to um, transport it. But Atlanta Fish Market prides itself on flying in fresh fish daily. So that's your little um, interesting fun fact. Sharon says, Maggie, I need help cooking a beef brisket. Can you help me? I don't know if I've ever made a, a beef brisket. I'm not a grill master. I can look up a recipe and try it, but I don't think I've ever made one. Kia says steak and lobster. She's here for Team Greedy. I know that's right. Uh, but yeah, if you all have any beef brisket recipes, let's share. I know my ex-husband was a grill master. I think you need a smoker, season it really well, and close it, <laughs> like go to sleep and wake up the next day. I don't know. Sometimes I watch those um, like barbecue master Texas um what do they call them? Like cooking wars or whatever. Tasha, you're not late, my dear. You're just in time. All right, so let's continue. All right, so uh, let me see if I've been to any of these other restaurants. If you all have been to any of these other restaurants, let me know. It looks like this is Brici, Corner Cafe, Kimia. This looks like Greek with the uh, the letters. Oh, thank you for the compliment, Norm. I appreciate that. Um, Lobster Bar, Sea Grill, Bistro Nico, and Buckhead Life Restaurant Group. So Buckhead is a part of mm, downtown Atlanta, not all the way downtown, mostly like a little bit north of downtown, but it's a little swanky part of Atlanta. I don't live in downtown. I'm in the suburbs. So we had to travel into the city, um, but there's lots of restaurants and shopping. If you like all those fancy name brands, I've been invited to like a fragrance thing in Buckhead next week. We'll see if I make it. If I do, you all will hear all about it. Hello, Fem Femininity Project. Okay. So let's take a look at the website. Anybody on IG, y'all know you can find me on Facebook and YouTube if you want to see the screen share. So you can see, oh, and this is their signature fried lobster tail. I did have that. My first time having fried lobster. We'll talk about that. Signature crab cake over here. I had that as well. So you all can see um, the decor here. Uh, very steakhousey, very what I would call masculine decor, very warm. Um, this is right next door to the St. Regis uh, Hotel. You all know I'm a fan of the St. Regis Spa. And I think I got some pictures outside. You'll be able to see um, how you go in. You can either take the stairs up or you can uh, take the elevator up. Hello, Lauren. My first time seeing you here, my dear. Hello and welcome. All right, so let's take a look and see what we can learn about chops. Um, of course, you can make a reservation. I had reservate. Well, I didn't have reservations, but reservations were made. I would probably highly recommend it. Um, I don't know. Uh, it. It was pretty packed uh, by the time we left. We had 6 p.m. reservations and they open for dinner at five. I don't believe they have earlier service, but we will take a look and see. All right, so let us continue. All right, I think we've gone through all the pictures in the carousel. It looks like calamari and we have some, uh, looks like shrimp cocktail. I don't know what that is. I love the lemon presentation. We'll talk about that. Okay. So let's read a little bit. Reading is fundamental. It's not a big one. So welcome to Chops Lobster Bar, a classic steakhouse. I would absolutely agree. So if you are a meat and potatoes uh, uh, meatitarian, this is the place for you. An Atlanta and South Florida icon known for its exceptional food and service, Chops Lobster Bar consistently ranks as one of, as one of the top 
10 steakhouses in the country. Stop the show. I didn't know that, y'all. I'm looking at this for the first time with y'all. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. No wonder, y'all. It was exquisite. It was excellent. And um, because I'm on this health and wellness journey, clearly, I know, believe me, y'all give me the feedback. But um, I try to stay on my plan and I don't really eat off of my plan. Hard to tell. But uh, when I do, it's nice to have a really, really good quality meal so that it's worth the calories. And oh my goodness, y'all, it was so good. All right. So this is a uh, very highly ranked steakhouse. Excellent. All right, let us continue. Exquisite seafood flown in fresh daily. All right, that says a lot right there. Um, because they are part of the uh, partnership with Atlanta Fish Market, I'm sure it's the same. Uh, we had, you all will see what we had, lobster mac and cheese, fried lobster, crab cake. When I tell you, and y'all know if you've those of you who live in coastal areas who are used to having fresh seafoods, seafood, consider yourself lucky. There's nothing like fresh when you can tell it just came out of the water. And uh, fresh fish, we've talked about this, should smell like the ocean. It should not smell fishy. In my opinion, it should kind of taste like the ocean, a little cool, a little salty. It shouldn't taste fishy. Um, and sometimes, you know, seafood, um, the farther you live from the coast and the longer it has to travel, it's less fresh. So I can tell why um, this is a premium experience. Who do we have here? Antonio Speaks. He says, good evening, Maggie. Thank you for the prayer hands. And is that an eagle? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let us continue. All right. Um, let's see. What else do they say? Exquisite seafood flown in fresh daily and the very best USDA prime aged beef are served with style in the warm ambiance of the dark wood dining room. Y'all, this is like a, <laughs> a novel, right? This makes for traditional steakhouse items that go above and beyond, such as our certified A5 Wagyu. Okay, y'all, that's what I had last night. I don't know anything about it. I think I'm going to Google it. If y'all can tell me what certified certified A5 Wagyu is, I'm just a mom and a home cooker, but I, I believe it's a Japanese, let me guess and then we'll look it up. I believe it's a Japanese cut of steak. It is very tender, uh, very rare because think of it, Japan has the opposite problem uh, of me here in the States, right? It's an island country, lots of coastline, great sushi, a lot of fish in their diet. So beef is at a premium. If you eat meat, you know, cows need a lot of land to roam and that is lacking in island nations. So the beef is going to be rare, not in the temperature, but in the availability. And um, it is so, so good. Who do we have here? Mr. Option One. You all know him and you all love him. He says, just passing through and um, and Mr. Option One has been so generous to sponsor me on our Maggie Meetup cruise. So again, if you all don't know, we have a cruise planned. Uh, it is November 27th on the Allure of the Seas. I will be there. Thank you, Mr. Option One with your heavy hands, always, always, always being a blessing to the channel. Thank you. All right. So Lauren says, I cooked a brisket in the oven last Thanksgiving. All right. So Sharon, this is for you. Let's see. Lauren says, it required marinade overnight and slow cook at low temperature. It came out great. Look, she's even giving you the recipe. All right. So um, Sharon, I know you're watching on Facebook, but if you can hop on over to uh, YouTube and grab this link, askchefdennis.com slash oven hyphen roasted hyphen brisket. Thank you, Lauren. I love the community here because y'all, I don't know. 
I figure it out as I go and I've never made a brisket, but uh, I'll take a look at that recipe too. Let me star it and um, maybe I'll try it. I don't know what kind of meat you need. Who do we have here? Oh, wait a minute. We got a stream sponsor already. Look who's coming in here. He says, happy Saturday, Maggie and chat. I'm at a wedding, re wedding reception. <laughs> Ron, and you came through with the with the four ninety nine. He says I'll have to catch the replay. Just wanted to stop by and show some love. Thank you for the love, y'all. Y'all love on me so so much, and I don't take it for granted. Thank you. So so far, our stream sponsor is Ron Alexander with the four ninety nine. Excuse me, multitasking coming through. I didn't find $5 in the laundry today, so I will take it. I appreciate it. I am so grateful. The stream sponsor is the person that gives the biggest cash app. If you want to support PayPal, Venmo, Facebook, stars, Instagram, gifts, um, TikTok has a thing. Twitter has tips. Honestly, I just appreciate you all being here. I didn't think anybody would care, but when you go above and beyond like that, it just makes my day. So let me put uh, Ron Alexander in the ticker, and then we will continue on. So thank you. Stream sponsor. $4.99. I appreciate it. Thank you, kind sir. I appreciate you. Enjoy the wedding. I love love. So let the wedding bells ring. All right. Ah, Mr. Option One says, Chops, one of my favorite hangout places. You don't say. Okay, so he's teaching us. He says, Wagyu A5 is imported directly from Japan. Very exclusive. Oh, I feel so, even more special. So in all seriousness, you all, just a little tip. You all know that I love to travel and uh, I'll be traveling to Greece this summer. But even when I go, you know, um, in North Georgia, you all will be following along wherever I go, wherever I go, I'm eating something. Um, but try, if you can, whenever you all travel to experience the local cuisine wherever you go. So if I were to go to Japan, I would want to have, of course, ramen and whatever seafood is popular there, not the eel and stuff like that, but um, coastal Locations are going to be a great place to try really good seafood, even here in the U.S. from Florida, that Gulf Shrimp, New England, shout out to Boston and y'all's lobster and all of that. Canada, if you, if you can get it. Um, but when I travel into the middle part of the country, you know, Kansas, barbecue, uh, y'all know steak in Texas, any of these states that have a lot of land to roam around, I'd love to know uh, where y'all are from, what is the... Uh, the local cuisine that you all are famous for. So you all know I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. We have peaches and pecans. Uh, so there's a lot of that going on here. But, you know, open up your horizons if you if you want to. That's a good place to start. Try the local cuisine wherever you are. What is Ron saying? My sister in-law's brother got married. They rented out a ranch style place. It's very nice. Oh, have fun, everyone. Absolutely. Look at Lauren sharing. The, look at Lauren's icon on Facebook and she's sharing you the link. Oh, I love this community. Thank you. All right, let us continue class. So we're learning about Chops Lobster, Nova Scotia lobster morsels, morsels. <laughs> Nova Scotia is a region in Canada. I've actually been there. I went on a New England cruise. I don't know if it's one of their provinces. I don't think they have states. They have provinces. And so their lobster comes from um, that part of the world. So it's flown in fresh and genuine Holland Dover sole. Sole is a type of fish. Uh, so if you're interested in the fish items, 
uh, that's an option for you. Whether you're dining for business or pleasure, a meal at Chops is sure to leave a lasting impression. I love that. Wonderfully well written. Mm, Kia says Louisiana and seafood is a must have here. Absolutely. Shout out to Louisiana. I know we have scholars all over the globe. So yes, if you all are in Louisiana, definitely have some seafood. It's probably uh, fried, but those beignets, y'all, I'm a hot buttered bread girl. God. Those would be calling my name. All right, let us continue. All right, I'm just going to scroll through. Um, we're going to choose a location. So I'm in Atlanta. So I'm just going to click here and see. All right, so you all can see the location. So this is in the Buckhead part of Atlanta. Um, you have their phone number here. All right, so upstairs hours. So this is where I was yesterday. So they only do dinner service. You all can see Sunday through Thursday, 5.30 until 9 p.m. So they stop seating at 9 p.m. That's good to know. Uh, but Friday and Saturday, they will seat you until 10 p.m. That's late for me, but hey, you never know. Maybe people like to go out after their evening. Uh, what's it called? Um, Oh my gosh, I just got a cash app. Y'all are already coming through. Y'all are such... Ah, did y'all hear that? Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Well, I know he says it's small, but we have a $5 cash app. So I am going to put the quiet storm in the ticker. You know who you are. You have outbid Ron Alexander by one penny. And he says, for a small donation to you, I appreciate it. I'm grateful for all of it. He says, I'll catch the replay. Thank you so much to the quiet storm. Thank you for the $5. So I'm going to put you in the ticker here. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ron Alexander. You're always so gracious to me. I appreciate you coming through. It's supposed to be at a wedding, but our new stream sponsor, y'all know we have the penny power over here, $5 to the quiet storm. Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Kia says, ha, 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 yes to the beignets, Maggie. Absolutely, yes. You had me at donuts, pastry, fried, dusted with sweet sugar. Stop. And uh, GQ, yes, uh, you have been counted present in attendance, so you are here. <laughs> Thank you for being here, sir or ma'am, whoever you are. All right, let us continue. All right, so you can get lunch at CHOP. So this is good to know if your business lunch, um, Monday through Friday, you can eat between 11.30 and 2.30, but they are closed for breakfast, closed for the late afternoon so they can prepare for dinner. Uh, I have not been to their lobster bar, but they have a lobster bar downstairs. I did get some pictures of it, so I'll see if I can show you all the pictures, 5.30 to 9 p.m. if you're not interested in the steakhouse experience. Uh, and then 5 30 to 10 p.m. Um, on Friday and Saturday. So we'll take a look at the menus. Obviously, you can make a reservation, highly recommended, or I guess walk in and see what the weight is. Then if you want to reserve the space for a private party, you most certainly can do that. All right, let's see. All right, I'm going to I'm going to read. I just want to see. So about Chops Atlanta, the two-story restaurant features Chops Upstairs. Chops is a warm, traditional, clubby steakhouse decorated with Honduran mahogany, custom-designed chandeliers, Italian marble floors, and coffered mahogany ceilings. Downstairs in the lobster bar, the arched herringbone subway tiled walls and ceilings with soft custom lighting creates an intimate and inviting ambiance. Well, designed by the Johnson Studio, headed by Bill Johnson, the architectural and design highlights of the Lobster Bar include, uh, I won't worry about the Lobster Bar because I didn't eat there, but you all can see this is the steakhouse, but a lot of intent went into the design. You all can see here, uh, best steaks in Atlanta, Atlanta's top 25 restaurants, and we have a lot of options here. And then 100 hottest restaurants, uh, number six on the list of 100, 100. So you all can see here, 
Of course, you can get the gift certificate. You can read the reviews, so on and so forth. All right. So highly, highly rated. A lot of people like it. Let us go to the menu and see what they have as an offering. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Now I went for dinner. I will take a quick look at the beverage menu. Well, let's see. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dinner menu. Let me see if I open. All right. So the cocktails, I'll just go ahead and show you all. Let me show you. We'll start with the cocktail so we can start in order. It opened up on another screen, so I'm going to pull it up and show you all. I did have a cocktail. Um, you all know, or if you don't know, I can be highly indecisive, just like a girl. So when the waiter came and told us the specials for the evening, that's what I got. So I'll tell you what the specials were. It was a lemon drop cocktail excellent. It was a strawberry salad with strawberry vinaigrette. Amazing. Lobster mac and cheese. Heavenly. And um, the Wagyu steak. I didn't even need to open the menu. You had me at hello. I wanted all of it. That's what I got. Greedy. But let's take a look and see what's on the drink menu. All right. So we're going to go to, all right, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. All right. <clears throat> so you all can let me know. Let me make sure I'm sharing. You all can let me know what your beverage of choice is. I am a girl, so I like it light and sweet. And that's what I asked for. So he recommended the um, lemon drop. But you all can see here, you can get your choice of martinis. I'm just scrolling. Ooh, that Piedmont peach sounds like Maggie. A vodka. Ooh, cream. Mm, cranberry and orange juice. Whew. What does this mean? Where are my bartenders at? What does served up mean? I don't know what that means. Does that mean made to order? So you can have your sparkling wines, of course, your Chardonnays, your white wines, Sauvignon, if you like your red wines. I'm not really a wine connoisseur. Your Pinots. Y'all know what you like. And you can see the prices here. Riesling, that sounds more like me, or a rosé, your blend options. And y'all, look at these prices. I'm sorry. I mean, it's it's excellent, but anywhere from $15 to $30 for a glass. So again, if you are so fortunate to be treated to a meal like this, show appreciation. Please show appreciation. Um, I'll share you all an experience that happened next to us. And it was a teachable moment. All right. And then you can see here they have craft beer available. So quite the drink menu, prices by the glass or your cocktails. I ended up with a uh, lemon drop. So usually on the dining documentary, we just talk about the food, but I am going to give you all a little bit of a teachable moment. So I was there with my dining companion last night and we were seated next to a table and at the table was about a dozen people. So let's say they were friends and family. They were celebrating the graduation for a young man. So congratulations, sir, whoever you are. I'm very proud of you. So he was the guest of honor and I'm assuming his family or uncle uncle or somebody wanted to treat the family to a, uh, a dinner at Chops to celebrate the young man's graduation. So there was a young lady that was there dining with the family. She was not the guest of honor. She was invited to attend. <sighs> Chops does have a dress code and she had kind of like a see-through blouse and some jeans on probably not the most appropriate. She had like a little crop top thing going on. Okay. But uh, she also ordered the same lemon drop that I ordered. And I only know this because my dining companion, who is a man, pointed this out to me. So ladies, I always like to give you um, <laughs> some inside scoop. 
I was paying attention to my dining companion because that's what you should do when someone invites you out to eat. You should be giving them your undivided attention. No phones, no looking at other people, no people watching. Please give attention and appreciation. So when my lemon drop arrived, I drank it. It was very nice, a little slowly. Maggie's a lightweight and I know that about myself. However, the young lady at the table next to me, who was part of the graduation party, when the lemon drop was served to her, before she even drank it, she said to the waiter, and I quote, you can go ahead and bring me another one. Not only is that not elegant, and I don't even know if she wanted to be elegant, it's actually very rude and presumptuous. Um, when someone is hosting you, ladies especially, alcohol is expensive and it doesn't really speak highly if you're asking for more before you've even finished the first one. And my dining companion made a note of that and mentioned it to me. And so I just like to give you all some insight. I'm never going to force you to be anything you don't want to be, but men are watching ladies and I have a one drink minimum. I did get two. I was offered two. But uh, when you are out with others, whether it's a business meeting or whether it's a date or whether it's a family celebration, people are always watching. And when you're ready to load up on $20 or $30 cocktails before the food comes out, especially when someone is treating you, it doesn't look um it's not a good, it's just not a good look. So I would encourage you all stick with one. Uh, but here's your tip that I learned in my etiquette classes, always follow the host. Okay. So if the host is having one glass of wine, then you order one glass of wine in the same price range as the host. If the host is not ordering alcohol, you do not order alcohol unless the host says, feel free to order whatever you'd like. I'm not a drinker, but you can help yourself. So that is a good guide when you are taken out. Likewise, if they don't order an appetizer, you don't unless they offer. If they don't order a dessert, you don't unless they offer. So these are some of the things that I've learned on my journey to refine. And a lot of times people don't know. And uh, sometimes your behavior may exclude you from being asked out again, and you don't know why. So just be mindful of that. Uh, what would have been a better option is to watch and wait and see how the host um, orders alcohol. If they order a, a cocktail or offer you to order a cocktail in the same price range, stick to one and be gracious. All right. That is your unsolicited etiquette tip of the night. Let us continue. All right, so we're done with the drink menu. Let's go on to the food, right? We're here for the snacks, okay? Thank you all for the likes. Thank you all for the hearts. What does Linda say? Oh, Linda, my dear. She says, thank you for relaying that. Good lesson to keep in mind. Yes, does the same apply to dessert? Absolutely. So again, you all, um, and this can be ladies for a date. This could be gentlemen uh, for a business meeting. When I was coming up, and y'all know I'm older, I'm 47, it was not uncommon for corporations to take you out for a meal as part of the interview process, and they would watch you, how you conducted yourself over the meal. Did you talk with food in your mouth? Uh, if you ordered a soup or something that was difficult to eat, how did you handle it? How do you handle your alcohol at events? So just be mindful of that, okay? So yes, that is the tip. Wait and see what the host does and follow. If all they order is a modest entree, then all you order is a modest entree, unless they offer. Um, you know, the waiter is always going to say, would you, to, would you like to take a look at the dessert menu? And you know, I want the sweets. Um, but my dining companion is like, no, I'm fine with dessert, but you can have what you like. So I ordered dessert. So that's just a good guide. Happy to help. If you all like this type of stuff, I share in my um, almost free Patreon. I do have a Patreon. There's a $1 level and a $5 level. And I'm building a community of those of us who are interested in refinement. So you can find out more there. 
But yes, absolutely. Oh, and another little tip, Lauren. So you all see I'm drinking out of a glass and I'm drinking water. I do have lipstick on. When you are dining with others, ladies, if you have makeup on, if you have lipstick on and you drink and you get some of that lipstick on the glass, you are to continue drinking from the same spot on the glass. Do not mark up the glass. Proper etiquette is really just about being mindful of others and you don't want to expose all of your lipstick to your dining companions, okay? So just drink from the same spot. What does Lauren, our travel agent, say? Y'all, I'm getting lotion. I'm ashy. She says this. This is true. I have experienced this kind of behavior as the host. Yes, y'all. It's just poor etiquette. Just poor etiquette. Okay. So if someone is taking you out, now, of course, if you are the one paying, have it your way, Burger King. But when someone is inviting you out, the purpose of the gathering is not to as one of my etiquette teachers say, woman of elegance, it's not to stretch your gut, okay? This is really about the, uh, hello, Zentiful. This is really about having the celebration with family. And again, the young man's graduation, he was the guest of honor. If anybody should have indulged, it should have been him, okay? Not a family member or friend. What does Kia say? I agree with you, Maggie. And if I'm attending a dinner party paid for by someone else, I am very careful and I follow my host's lead. Absolutely. What does Tracy says? Yes, you can bring me another one. Yes. And that was a thing you all. And here's the thing. I didn't even notice it, but you know who noticed it? My dining companion, who is a man. So ladies, men are always watching and observing from across the room. And sometimes if you wonder why you may be counted out, they have seen behavior that they do not want to entertain and you had no idea. So yeah, they set the lemon drop down and she's like, oh, you can go ahead and bring me another one. $20 cocktail, hadn't even touched it. Greedy. Hello, Mona. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So you all had your talking to, you had your etiquette lesson. At this point, y'all are going to get what you get. It may be some relationship stuff. It may be some cooking stuff. It may be etiquette stuff. At this point, I'm old. I'm, I'm tired of trying to separate it. This is all of Maggie. All right. Let us continue. So now we're going to take a look at the menu for chops. Mm, I'm so excited. All right. So we looked at the beverage menu. All right. Hello, everybody coming in. Let me make sure that I am sharing. All right. So let's see. Uh, and I did order a little bit of everything. Uh, so you all will see my pictures in just a bit. So let's look at the appetizers. OK, so we'll just OK, we'll just take a look through. And I would love to know from this list of appetizers, take a look and let me know in the comments what you would order. And of course, I'm going to tell you what I ordered. I didn't order anything off the menu because they were running specials and I'm indecisive. So it all sounds good. So I said, I'll have that. All right. <clears throat> Let us continue. Sorry, y'all. I'm a little bit raspy. Hi. All right. So lobster bisque, my dining companion did have that. Maine lobster bisque. Uh, oh, bisque, I'm sorry, uh, with cognac. Yummy. So that is like a pureed soup. You can have your chili glazed tiger shrimp. That sounds incredible. If you like those big uh, shrimp escargot, which is snail, I will pass. Um, but you all can let me know uh, if you like your puff pastry, garlic butter, uh, snail. I'm assuming that is cooked. I don't know how snail is eaten. I've never eaten it before. But again, we do not judge what other people eat. If someone offers to you and you're not interested, you just kindly say, no, thank you. You are not required to eat anything that you don't like. But what you absolutely do not do, and here's another unsolicited etiquette tip, you don't turn up your nose and you don't say, ew, that's nasty. Allow people to have what they want and then you choose what you would like. Lauren's here for the sushi. All right, let's continue. Uh, um, oh, yes. Sushi, uh, tuna tartare. Okay. So let's talk about this, you all. They have steak tartare and tuna tartare on the menu, which means it is served raw and it is created table side. There was a couple across the way from us and I saw them getting um, steak tartare. You can eat steak raw or rare. 
I don't, but I knew I know people who do. Um, and especially with good quality seafood that is flown in fresh. Absolutely. People have been eating that for years. So have at it. All right, let's continue. Oh, you can get a whole lobster tail or cut into morsels. And their signature, I did have this, is the lightly fried, which is flash fried with drawn butter and honey mustard. I did have that. It was excellent. So you all will see pictures of that. They also have Thai chili calamari. I love octopus or squid. Then your steak tartare, if you want to have uh, with uh, toast and salad uh, prepared right in front of you. That's your raw steak. Uh, we did share this, the jumbo crab cake. I finished that today. Oh my gosh. And look, it says all jumbo lump crab cake, Maryland style. So the all jumbo lump crab, that means that the whole crab cake was just crab meat. A lot of crab cake. Thank you all for the love on uh, Instagram. If you want to see the um, screen share, I'm on Facebook and YouTube as well. Um, a lot of, what was I going to say? I forgot it already. One second, y'all. I'm getting old. Uh, a lot of crab cake has a binding filler. So it's either Craig bread crumbs or uh, egg or other things with the crab to form it into a like patty that they then cook. I've made um, crab cake before, but this crab cake at Chops was all crab. It was so good. Kia says my appetizer would be the jumbo lump crab cake. Yes, ma'am. It was excellent. You'll see that. I did have that. All right, with a lemon grade mustard emulsion. Y'all, it was a quarter pound of crab. Oh my gosh. And then the half and half. So if you want to have the jumbo shrimp and colossal lump crab, you can have that with cocktail sauce. Oh, that was a picture that we saw. Uh, if you want it served cold. Or you can have Mediterranean octopus. Never had uh, char grilled octopus, but that's an option for you. I have had. Here he comes, as per usual, with his heavy, heavy hands. Mr. Option One says, everyone have a good night. Maggie, have a drink and dessert on me next time. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't take it for granted. Wow. Y'all, I didn't think anybody would care. But um, you all keep coming back, and you're such a blessing here. Thank you, Ron Alexander. Thank you, The Quiet Storm. And thank you, Mr. Option One. We have a new stream sponsor. And ladies, yes, if they offer, of course, help yourself. But wait first, okay? Uh, let me update the ticker. Mr. Option One has come through with $50 as the stream sponsor. You all know him and you all love him. Please put option one in the chat. Mr. Oh, option one. Thank you. Thank you. He has sponsored me on the cruise. He has replaced my kitchen from the air fryer to the microwave to the stove. I'm so grateful. Thank you. We have Geneva coming through. She says, hello, Maggie. Hello, my dear. Yes, thank you, Mr. Option One. Kia says, oh my goodness, I know that was amazing. With no filler, just crab. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're going to see it. Kia says, thank you and good night, Mr. Option One. Yes, absolutely. All right, y'all, let's continue. Let's see what else is on the menu. Then we'll go to my pictures. Okay, if you like your appetizers cold, you can get a shellfish tower. Anytime you see market price, just know whatever the price of the day is, um, that's what you're going to pay. But if you want all of these delectable things, lobster, shrimp, oysters, crab, mayo, cocktail sauce, and horseradish for two people at minimum, mm-hmm. 
uh, or oysters. Shout out to AV to the seventh power. Anytime I'm out with AV, she is going to get her oysters. Oh my goodness. They do have salad. So if you like a good salad, you can get your Caesar salad, standard for a steakhouse. Uh, also your iceberg wedge BLT. Love that with your bacon and blue cheese. Who loves a wedge salad with a steak? You can get your chops, chopped salad. Chopped salad means that all of the pieces are cut up very small and tossed in the dressing uh, so they're not layered. Uh, that sounds really good. Uh, so you can see what comes in their salad with hearts of palm, chickpeas. And then you can get, ah, oh, this is what I got you all a version of this. So their specialty is a warm spinach salad. Let me tell you all about this. I think I got it last time. Um, and this time I believe strawberries are in season. So I got the strawberry version, but oh, it was exquisite. Okay. So this is a warm spinach salad uh, prepared table side. So they bring all the ingredients out. This had candy shiitakes, which are mushrooms, bacon, lardon. I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. Uh, and toasted pine nuts. So that's their uh, regular specialty salad. So the version that I had was the um, strawberry salad. So it was the greens with the warm vinaigrette, but um, candied pecans and strawberries and crumbled goat's cheese. So good. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. God, I love to eat, clearly. Hello, everyone. All right, so let's take a look at the sides. What else do they have for, for your menu items? You can get on the side a whole, no, I'm sorry, their specialty lobster mashed potato. You get a whole one pound uh, um, lobster. Now you can see here this serves two to three. So let's talk about this, you all, because I was actually surprised. I don't go to steakhouses often, but now I realize. So when you go to a steakhouse like this, you're going to order your entree, which is the steak or fish or whatever you want. Then when you order sides, they don't come on your plate as a portion for one. You're actually getting shareable sides. So keep that in mind, okay? I noticed this when I ordered the mac and cheese or the green beans or whatever came, they're going to come separate from the steak in a little bowl on the table and with a serving spoon. So you can serve a little bit of everything on your plate. So these prices you can see, excuse me, are more expensive, but they're meant to be shared. So you're going to order your steak and then try to agree on uh, whatever sides you want to have. Who do we have here? All about the Max saying hello, Maggie moderators and everyone. Thank you so much for being here. All right, so let's continue. All right, so what other shareable sides? You can get thin green beans. My dining companion did get those with shallot butter. You could get your jumbo grilled asparagus, creamed baby spinach, hash potato tots, Lord of mercy, with blue cheese truffle, come get me now, thick cut onion rings, creamy curly mac and smoked gouda. So we did get mac and cheese, uh, but this was a lobster mac and cheese, which was the specialty. So it was mac and cheese with the whole like whole lobster tail cut up in it. So good. The sides, y'all, the sides. All right, let's continue and see what else they have on the sides menu. Broccolini. So yes, you can have your uh, clean greens with just salt and olive oil. Absolutely. Brussels sprouts with leaves and mushrooms. You can have your creamless corn mash. Wow. You can get a one pound baked potato. My dining companion did get that with butter and chives and bacon. I heard it was excellent. Thin cut fries, black truffle Parmesan fries, and Yukon gold mashed potatoes. So I'd love to know from the sides menu, what are you all having with your steak or what are you all having with your um, seafood? And let me give you all another unsolicited piece of etiquette that I've learned. Um, I know sometimes it's fun when we go out with people, ooh, that looks good. Can I taste it? Mm-mm. No, we don't do that. Um, if someone offers you, then of course, if you want, if you must try it, you can cut off, uh, they can cut off a little bit and let you try it. I don't mind to share, but 
people don't like it, especially men, when you eat off of their plate. Now, if it's your husband or your long-term love, you know, maybe, but don't look at someone else's food and want to eat off of their plate. Um, It's just poor etiquette and you definitely don't want to do that with strangers. Uh, Also, if you eat something and it's excellent, this one goes for Maggie. Just say, it is so good. Y'all see me in the kitchen when I'm cooking and I do all of my shenanigans, right? That's not appropriate in fine dining. This is one of the best steakhouses in the country. So you want to, you know, act accordingly. And this is why I take classes. I always want to represent myself well and represent you all well. So again, shareable sides. You all will see in the pictures when they bring them. You never eat out of the serving bowl. You use the spoon that it comes with and you serve a little bit onto your plate and then you eat off of what you served yourself. Okay. So if you are ever eating family style or anything shareable, you never put your fork into the um, the shareable container. All right. Always serve yourself. Uh, and then ladies, a good tip. What I always do, especially if you're eating with a gentleman, serve him first. Um, I butter the bread and give um, the bread of choice to my dining companion. Um If there's a carafe on the table, it's proper etiquette uh, before you fill or refill your glass to refill the other person's glass. Um, Now, of course, at a restaurant like this, the servers are right there. As soon as you touch something, they're there to replenish it. But before you just heap stuff onto your plate, offer to serve others. It's just a little bit that goes a long way. All right. Key is here for the Yukon uh, gold mashed potatoes or that lobster mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. All right. Let us continue. Mm-hmm. So, of course, all it says here, USDA prime steak, pick a steak, any steak, strip, ribeye, sirloin, I'm sure, filet. I'm sure they have it all. All right. And then your custom aged steaks. This is what I did have. Okay. Sticker shock, sticker shock, (laughs) sticker shock. Again, y'all know I cook every day. This is rare. And I am very grateful for the opportunity. So you can get a filet if you would like an eight ounce or 12 ounce Angus uh, filet. The ribeye. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I didn't look at the prices, y'all. You can have a bone in ribeye or a bone in filet. New York strip, bone in ribeye. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Even longer aged for flavor, porterhouse. Jeez. This is, um, I didn't have a Japanese certified uh, Wagyu filet. I had a Japanese certified Wagyu ribeye. Oh my gosh, I'm glad it's not on here. It was the special, but let's read. It says, Chops is one of a few is one of a selected few restaurants in the U.S. to offer genuine certified Miyazaki Prefecture A5 Wagyu from Miyazaki, Miyazaki Japan, known for its unparalleled, unparalleled texture, marbling, unique flavor, and tenderness. Y'all, that was one of the best steaks of my life. It was that good. It was so good. Kia says, I know all about the Max. Everything sounds delicious, right? All right. So I had the A5 Wagyu um, ribeye. And then, oh my gosh, I'm so greedy. The enhancement. See, we just recommend everything and I want it all. You can have a lobster tail added to your steak if you want surf and turf. Yes, I did do that. If you want blue cheese or mushrooms on the side. If you want a hollandaise sauce, if you want foie gras, which is a uh, duck liver, I did not get that, or truffle butter. So you can have all these enhancements. I'm going to be honest with you all. The steak was so good on its own. You don't really need anything, but they have everything there that you could ask. All about the Max is yes, tender, and it comes out sizzling. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So good. 
Okay, so sorry, I'm not a vegetarian or vegan, but they do have live lobsters until you order it from the deep icy waters of Nova Scotia, the Rolls Royce of lobsters. And that icy water reminds me, I'm not a sushi person, but I believe it was Erin Laura, our Canadian scholar that said, if you're going to eat sashimi, which is the raw fish, uh, it comes from the very cold waters those are safe to eat raw. You don't want to eat warm water fish raw because it could have other stuff. Okay. I didn't know that. I learned that in one of our streams. All right. So you can get your live lobster steamed and cracked at market price. You can have it stuffed with crab if you want even more seafood. You can have the Afri South African cold water lobster tails. Ah, oh, This is their signature. They do a flash fry, which is literally a fast drop and bring out after it's battered with drawn butter, lemon, and honey mustard. I did have that. You can have your lobster tail broiled and stuffed with crab. Oh my goodness. If you're not a steak person, you can have seafood, um, pork chops, or chicken. So your fish items. You can have crab cake. You can have your seared tuna. You can have your chicken Vesuvio, mm. uh, Chilean sea bass, grouper, oh my gosh, salmon, or two lamb chops. I said pork chops. I'm sorry, lamb chops. Okay. So we have looked at the menu all. You can tell that this is a very, <laughs> in my opinion, um, expensive restaurant, but you get what you pay for. I am not going to pretend that I eat like this. Y'all know I clip coupons over here. So this was a very, very special treat and I am grateful. So you all have seen the menu. Now Mona says free the lobsters. I know, right? All right. So now I'm just going to show you all, um, the, the pictures and videos from my experience. Just want to make sure that uh, we have everything in here. All right, hello everybody coming in. All right. Oh, some of these I didn't rotate, but I'll, I'll rotate them for you. Oh. All right, so let's take a look. Yes, thank you all for liking the live stream. All right. So these are just my pictures and video from my phone. I am not a professional, but I like to take you all on dining adventures with me. All right. Okay, so this is Chops Lobster Bar. Now let's see. Oh. Let me take this down. Hold on. Okay. Let me make sure that I'm sharing. I wish it were, um, I need to do better and get you guys full screen. I should have turned my camera. But you see, we're coming up towards the um, St. Regis Hotel, the St. Regis Hotel, uh, where I go to the spa sometimes. There's the chops. There you go. Let me make sure I give you all good quality. So we're turning in. Um, so you can see uh, the St. Regis and it is valet only. Uh, I know sometimes you all ask about the parking. So there's the Chops restaurant right next door. Um, and yes, it is a valet parking only. So they do not have self parking. So just keep that in mind. I didn't pay, but I did ask. And I believe parking is $15 valet but if you take your ticket in and it's validated, it either comes down to two or three dollars. I could be wrong. I don't know. But just just know that you will uh, have to valet. Wilbur says, greetings from the cloud. Thank you so much for being here, Wilbur. So happy to have you. All right. Let us continue. All right, so you can see uh, we're going in and going to the elevator. I don't know if it shows. So the Chops restaurant, well, this is a, a bad picture. I know it was raining. So I don't know if you all can see this is two le levels. So the Chops restaurant is uh, here. 
Okay. It's kind of hard to see. We'll get inside, but the Chops restaurant is on the second level and then the lobster bar is on this first level. So when you go in, you can either take the stairs and enter here or you can go in and take the elevator. So I was in the um, elevator. All right. So you can see that they do have a dress code and I like that. I actually like that. Um, I don't get to go out much and you know, there's nothing. Hmm. How do I say this? You know, when you go somewhere nice, the ambiance is a big part of it. All right. So uh, just be respectful. There's a time and place for everything, but you all can see here that they don't allow uh, basically sportswear um, any type of recreational, you know what? Uh, so just be mindful. And especially if someone invites you, don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Don't embarrass yourself. Ladies, gents, this is something that you can do ahead of time. So let's say you're part of the, um, um, what is it called? That graduation party that was next to me. Google is your friend. There's no reason you should ever find yourself out of sorts. Look up the restaurant. You can call ahead in advance or you can go to their website. The uh, dress code is on the website as well. It's always better to show up a little bit overdressed than underdressed. And again, this could be a date. This could be a family function. This could be an interview, a business meeting. Uh, just make sure you know what's appropriate. All right. Ah, Lauren says... Thank you, Maggie. I'm definitely a dancer while enjoying delicious food. Absolutely. Y'all y'all have seen me at home. When you're home or you're on your own, that's fine. But when you're out somewhere in a nice estab establishment, even I have to know, okay, bring it down, Maggie, bring it down. Um, hello, Salim. This is in Atlanta, um, but this restaurant has an Atlanta and a Florida location. If you want to see the screen share, I'm on Facebook and YouTube. Uh Serving, show, giving. I don't understand. All right, so let us continue. So just take a look. Um, all right, so when we came in, let me see if I can zoom in. So you all can see linens. This is not the table that we sat at. Oh, I'm not sharing. <laughs> this is not the table that we sat at, but you all can see for, of course, for this steakhouse, you're going to see nice linens, nice glassware, napkins folded, everything properly um, displayed. Uh, we can talk about this in another stream. You have your water glass, which is always going to be the biggest, your red wine glass, the next biggest, your white wine, white wine glass, the next biggest in size. When you sit down, ladies and gents always take the napkin and fold it quietly in your lap none of this flapping in the air like a bed sheet we don't do that take the napkin down place it in your lap and give you all another unsolicited etiquette tip uh, I should have brought it with me <laughs> clean my glasses with this. You want to keep the seam of the napkin towards you. So let's say this is your dining napkin. All right. So the crease is towards the table. The seam is towards you and you put it in your lap. That's one of the first things that you do when you sit down quietly and gently. Why? So that if you need to blot, you open up the napkin and then you blot gently any food or anything from your face and then you're going to close it back and, and put it back in your lap. Remember, proper etiquette is about making others around you feel comfortable and welcome. So just like we don't want to expose them to all of our lipstick on the glass, you don't want to wipe the whole side and then you have it all on the outside. Fold it in half, blot with the inside, gentle, and then close it back. What does Kia say? I'm going to dress cute and classy going to that elegant place. Absolutely. I did have a dress on. I didn't take a full length picture, but I did have a dress on. And um, I was told uh, the, um, the color scheme for the evening. So I wanted to dress accordingly. But yes, absolutely. It was an occasion. Wilbert says the bed sheet flap for extra food protection. No, we don't do that. All right, so let us continue. Oh, also, ladies, the food, when you go out to eat, nothing on the table that's not food related. Cell phones, purses, umbrellas, all of that. Terribly poor etiquette. So there are um, different options you can do. You can put, if it's a clutch in your lap underneath the napkin or in the small of your back behind the chair, um, we were seated at a table that, uh, that seats four, even though there were only two of us. So I put my uh, coat 
uh, in the chair that was unoccupied. A lot of times they will take your coat uh, or the back of the chair, but at a dining experience, no elbows on the table, nothing that is not part of the dinner service on the table. The only exception is when the dinner service is over and they've cleared the table and you wanna lean in to have a conversation, you can put elbows or whatever up on the table then, but during the dinner service, nothing but food on the table. Hello, uh, peace. <laughs> Kia says, you look so pretty in your pink and I love the color scheme. Thank you. Mona says, great tips, Maggie, to keep us elegant on our outings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So let us continue. Oh, hello. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think I just got a little um, video of the menu. Uh, like I said, I didn't order off the menu because the waiter was coming through to describe. And uh, a little etiquette tip for the menu. Proper etiquette when you have a menu is to hold it against the table. So let's say this is my menu. Not like this not in front of your face, not like this. Wherever the edge of the table is, you gently place the menu on the table and open it up so that you can look at the menu and maintain eye contact with your dining companion, all right? These are all things that I've learned in my classes. I'm sharing them with you all. Thank you all so much for being here. At this point, I'm just blending it all together, all right? So just slide it gently towards you and then open it uh, propped up against the table. So this is what I wore. This dress was actually um, starting to, it, it's a little big. I need to get rid of it. But yes, it was kind of falling off the shoulders, but it was kind of like a lavender uh, dress, knee length kind of, you know, figure uh, fitted. Uh, but it was, um, it was nice. So that was what I wore. All right, so you can see, uh, I just took a little pan around so you all can see the decor. We talked about that, the, the what was that, the marble floors, um, very steakhouse-y, the light fixtures, you can see there. All right. Oh, all right. Just looking around. All right, so you can see the uh, the uh, color scheme. All right. Oh, one thing that was nice. So I was told if you notice the QR code on the table, um, and I don't know if this is new for uh, contact less, but. Um, I was treated to dinner, so I'm very grateful for that. But you could take your phone and scan the QR code and the bill uh, was on that QR code for the table. So you didn't have to give your card. You didn't have to have a folio handed back and forth. Um, you didn't have to sign with a pen. Uh, it offered whatever card of your choice, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Uh, and then if you asked for coffee or dessert, after the, um, as you ordered, the bill was automatically updated. So again, um, a very nice um, feature. Oh, thank you, JP Grace. I appreciate that. Oh, JP World, you said I can feel your grace. Thank you. Who do we have here? Mona says, very nice. Yes, it was very nice. Real Bravado Network says, look who's live right now. It's Maggie. Yes, if anybody's new here, I do stream every day. I didn't stream yesterday. Um, but usually it's cooking. Um, but now you all, I'm going to give you some of the relationship um, experience and the uh, etiquette. Um, it's just all part of me. So I tried to separate it, but here we are. Uh, we have Kay Renee's uh, garden. She says, hi, Maggie and chat family. Hello, my dear. Thank you for being here. All right. Let us continue. Uh, so yeah, we were just talking about that. Your salt and fresh cracked pepper. Very, very nice on the table. All right. All right. 
So you can see here my lemon drop. Did I get a better picture of the lemon drop? So this was the um, this was the appetizer, not the appetizer. This was the cocktail of choice. I don't know what's in a lemon drop, but this was the cocktail that uh, raised a little bit of eyebrows. Um, but it was uh, very well made. Uh, sugar on the rim uh, with lemon juice and whatever is in a lemon drop. I don't know if it was vodka, uh, but again, ladies, whenever you are drinking out of stemware, please hold the stem. This is not uh, stemware, but you don't want to grab. Here's your unsolicited etiquette tip. Not elegant at all. Do not grab the glass by the bowl. Absolutely not grab it by the stem. This is something you can practice at home for free. If it's stemware, for me, the most sturdy place is right underneath, let's see, the bowl. So you can kind of prop it up underneath here for um, to help you with the weight. And then the further you go down on the stem, the more elegant it is. Um, but there's a reason for that. Not only is it just the etiquette, uh, but also wine and cocktails are supposed to be enjoyed at the temperature of which they are served. So if it is a sparkling or a chilled white wine or a champagne, when you grab it by the bowl, the warmth from your hand is taking away from the temperature. And so it's not going to be um, the, the drinking experience will would have changed. Likewise, uh, red wine should be served, because I was with a wine connoisseur, y'all know, I don't know, um, should be served room temperature. So when you hold it in your hands, that warms it up. So again, same spot if you get lipstick on it and hold it from the stem. Small, silent sips. What does Wilbert say? I'm not a drinker. Do you mix the sugar around the top of the glass into the drink? Wait. So as you sip, I don't know, where are my martini? Uh, no, yeah, that's a martini? I believe so. So when you go to sip, you get the lemon flavor from the alcohol mixed with the sugar, and it all goes back together. And uh, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, but yes, it's part of the drinking experience. So if I'm missing anything, y'all let me know. I'm learning this stuff and sharing it with y'all, so I don't know everything, but I'm going to be meeting with my etiquette teacher this week. I meet with her once a month, so if you all have questions, let me know. I will ask Emma, um, and I'll post that as well. What is the proper etiquette when you're drinking, like with a sugar-rimmed uh, or salt-rimmed glass? Mm, I'm excited. All right, so that was my lemon drop. A little goes a long way with Maggie. All right. So I'm trying to show you all, did I get a video of it? All right, so see, I'm holding it. Another thing, very small sip, and I'm holding it from the stem. And then notice, you don't tip your head all the way back. We don't do that. You don't guzzle like a camel, all right? We take small steps, small steps, we take small sips, we hold from the stem, and um, we, bring the, we bring the drink to our mouth, okay? We don't, <laughs> y'all know. What does Wilbert say? But aren't you supposed to only drink from one part of the glass? I know, Wilbert. If you make a lipstick stain so you wouldn't be able to enjoy all the sugar, I enjoyed all of the sugar, and I kept my lipstick off the glass. <laughs> But I'm going to find out for you. This one is stumped. But yes, um, I wonder if there's an exception for these sugar and salt room drinks. So you got me, Wilbert. You got me. But yes, that's your typical tip. All right. If you have a lipstick stain. But li listen, ladies, in all seriousness, if you are served a drink with a sugar rim or a salt rim and you have your lipstick on it, just drink from the same spot and forego the sugar or, you know, salt. I just think it's, how tacky would that be to have a glass with your mouth prints all over it? I just, mm. 
Wilbur says, I'm paying attention. I know, I can tell from the clouds. You ain't never in the clouds, Wilbur. All right, so, and this is something you can practice at home, ladies. If you're not really sure, you know, get water or get whatever beverage you're going to drink and try uh, holding it and taking small sips, all right? So that is that, all right. Oh, did I? All right. Just getting some footage from you all. So the bread came out and oh, the bread and butter came out. They they gave us two options for bread. So this is raisin bread and then, um, I don't know, maybe some type of sourdough or whatever. And ladies, just a little tip not required but remember when everything come whenever anything comes to the table that is sharing uh especially if you're on a date or with a um with a gentleman you can offer to serve him his bread that's what i do you can do whatever you like but i ask which bread would you like would you like the raisin bread or would you like the regular bread you would like the re the regular bread and so i take it and I place it on his plate with some butter and I may butter it for him if he would like. That's just something that I do. You can do it how you like. Bread etiquette, ladies. This is a big one. We do not slather the butter on the bread, fold it together and make a sandwich. We do not. Also, if you notice, the butter was another shareable container. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. All right, so this is the butter dish that came out. So what you would do is you would take a piece of bread from the butter, from the bread basket, and first you would place it onto your bread plate. You do not take bread from the shareable bowl and go directly to your mouth. Do not do that. Take the bread that you want. And yes, you should use your hands. If it is finger food, bread is finger food. Put it on your plate and then use your butter knife to take some of the butter from the shareable container and put that on your plate. Then when you have a portion of bread on your plate and a portion of butter on your plate, you tear off a small piece of bread that you can pop into your mouth and eat in one bite, okay? You're not supposed to have a big slice of bread that you bite on and yank the piece away from your mouth. Uh-uh, we don't do that. Take the bread from the basket into the plate. Then from your plate, tear off a small bite-sized piece. Use your butter knife and butter just that piece and pop it to your mouth. I know it's a lot. But if you want to know the proper bread etiquette, that is the proper etiquette. So no sandwiches, no slathering, no eating out of the bread basket. Um, and likewise with the butter, don't serve yourself directly from the shareable portion. Take the portion that you want onto your plate. All right. So I hope you all like this stuff. If not, oh, you don't have to do any of this stuff. I'm just sharing with you what I've learned. All right. So that was that. So the raisin bread was exquisite. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's so much you all. I don't get it all right either, but in fine dining, you actually don't ask for a doggy bag. I know. I know. Ideally you order a small enough portion that you can eat it and enjoy your evening. This is not about ordering food extra for the next day. Now we did have food to go. If the server comes and notices that you haven't finished your food and they offer, would you like for me to pack this for you? Then by all means you can. And so I was asked and I said, yes, please. So they packed it for you table side, which I thought was very nice. But in fine dining, no doggy bags, ladies. I know. All right. And no ordering for other people. That's just, no. All right. So we have the bread. We have the water glass. We have, uh, well, I didn't have a wine. I had a lemon drop. But uh, just beautiful place setting. And um, oh, gosh, y'all, so many teachable moments. Ugh. I'm noticing on the pictures here, over here is a cell phone. 
Is it my cell phone? No. Did I say anything? No. Should you say anything? No. Etiquette is not about telling others what to do. It's not about telling other people how to eat, how to hold their glass. This is something that I've sought out for me. So when I'm dining with others, I make sure that I follow the etiquette rules and then I just enjoy their company. Okay. So don't be that person. Don't be that know-it-all. Don't be that busybody. If you see something, just make a note and do the opposite. What does Wilbert say? If you're on a date, can the man get the doggy bag since the lady cannot? Of course, if the man is taking you out on a date, you know, he can do, honestly, if you're taking someone else on a date, you can. But this is really just about being a gracious guest. If someone is providing for you or taking you out, um, carrying food to go is just not the best etiquette. But yes, absolutely, Wilbur. And if your dining companion offers you to take it to go, by all means. This is not about um, all the rules and regulations. It's really just about being gracious. All right. Let us continue. All right. Um, all right. So I'm showing you all how to eat the bread. So you see here, I have a little butter on my plate and then I have the bread here that I've taken. And just like I explained to you all, I took a small bite-sized piece, butter that, and that's what I put in my mouth, all right? So trying to show you all what I've learned. Hello, everybody coming in. All right, so then the appetizer came in. Oh, there's your lump crab cake come to mama. So it's served in a sauce. And again, this is a shareable entree. You can tell everything was served with a spoon and there is no breading. Did I get a good picture of it? There you go. There is no breading. There is no egg. This is a crab cake that is all jumbo lump crab. So what you would do again, since this is a shareable item, you would bring your plate close by I should have done that. Bring my plate closer by, use the spoon, scoop out a little, offer to serve your dining companion first, ladies. Serve their plate if they would like, and then serve yourself. This crab cake, so good. It was literally just crab formed into a cake. Excellent. And we didn't eat it all. And I finished it today. It was so good. Wilbert says, that's not shareable. That's one serving for me. All right. So Wilbert is here for Team Greedy. But yes, it was served as an appetizer to share. All right, Wilbert, <laughs> Team Greedy in the house. So yes, oh, so good. All right, just take several pictures, just like I do for you all. Several pictures of the crab cake. Oh, God, it was so good. All right, now I ordered a salad. So you can see this is my warm uh, salad. It was so good. This video doesn't do it justice, but you can see the greens with the strawberry vinaigrette, crumbled goat's cheese, the candied pecans, and the fresh strawberries. You can see We've eaten half of the crab cake back here. The server asked if I wanted fresh pepper. I kind of went a little overboard on the pepper, but it was so good. Let me show you all. All right. Oh, <laughs> just so incredibly flavorful. Fresh goat's cheese. You all know I love a good goat's cheese. Fresh strawberries, uh, vinaigrette with the strawberries, pepper. So good. What does Kia say? Oh my goodness, this crab cake looks amazing. I would definitely serve my husband first. Very good. Kia is on it, doggone it. Ladies, gentlemen, notice these things. Do you just jump to the front of the line when the food is served? When the food hits the table, do you put your fist in the bread basket and then, you know, eat it like a caveman? Or do you try to show a little bit of restraint? Ask your dining companion which slice they would like. Serve them first. A little bit goes a long way, especially if someone's treating you to a meal. 
All about the Mac says, Wilbert, my husband eats the shareable dishes by himself. Excuse me, hashtag team greedy. Wilbert says, I didn't know warm salads existed. This is so educational. You're all in, Greg. Yes, if you want to see the screen share, I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. So this was the seasonal salad and the dressing is warm. I have actually done a warm salad before. I'm trying to remember you all. Oh my gosh, I haven't done it in a while. Was it crab? Oh, I love a cold salad with the warm protein, but basically um, for their house spinach salad, the greens and the pecans and the cheese and all of that is room temperature, but they actually make a warm dressing table side. So they bring out the cart and they have all the ingredients. Let's say it's olive oil and some glaze and some seasonings, and they literally like will cook it in front of you. And then they will drizzle it all over the salad of fret. <laughs> So good. Doesn't it make it soggy? No, if you eat it right away. Um, so of course, if you were to just have it sitting, it would wilt. But if you have fresh greens and then you drizzle the dressing and they do it table side, that's why it's fresh. It's not served that way from the back. It's actually uh, prepared right in front of you. Yes, um, your husband is a good man. Ah, uh, yes. Look, if I took the boys here, they'd be like, share what? Can he get his own? All right. I'm just sharing with you all what I know. Okay. Oh, so that was my spinach salad. Excellent. Oh, the crunchy pecans, the fresh, juicy strawberries, the creamy goat's cheese. Y'all, it was exquisite. So good. Crab cake still over here, hanging out. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. All right. So I ate the salad, almost all of it. Okay. So this is them um, packing up. So as more dishes and more um, courses are coming, the wait staff asked if we would like the, um, the what's it called? The crab cake um, packed up. And I said, yes. So they packed it for us table side, which is absolutely lovely and great to go. I know we've got real bravado in here. Y'all don't waste these. Um... Okay. These, um, how do you say, um, to go dishes are, um, I'm going to reuse them. I'm going to absolutely run them through the dishwasher and reuse them, okay? All right, so that's an option for you. All right, so I think that's just the lemon drop. Oh yeah, I'm just showing you all how to get the, uh, the glass holding it by the stem. So, <laughs> all right, salad, I probably should have left some. It was so good. Okay, so now, oh, I'm not even showing y'all, sorry. <laughs> all right, so now we are moving on towards the uh, main course is coming. They have brought the drawn butter, the uh, lemon, and the honey mustard. So you can see here, the butter is in a little container here with a lamp underneath to keep it warm. For the surf and turf, I have a uh, lobster coming with my steak. This is their honey mustard um, house specialty that goes with the fried lobster. It was a bit much for me. I thought the lobster was excellent on its own, just with the butter, but that is their signature. And then this is the half cut lemon. And the reason why it's served with this little mesh on here is so that when you squeeze the lemon over your seafood, you don't get any uh, seeds in your uh, seafood. Okay. So that's just a nice little touch. Um, so you don't have to worry about the seeds seeds popping out. All right, so we are going to uh, continue. Let me see here. More of the drawn butter. You can see 
Very nice. Ah, oh, just so good. So good. All right, so my entree has arrived. This is the surf and turf. And we got a peppercorn, um, what is it? A peppercorn sauce on the side. And this is the lobster mac and cheese. Oh Y'all, it was just, and the shareable green beans. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of food, a lot of food. So there's my ribeye and the potato. So I'm cutting into it and you all can see here, so tender, so, so incredibly juicy. So good, so good. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. So this is my Wagyu uh, ribeye, so flavorful. I mean, just tasted like butter, incredible. So I did get the option to add a lobster tail on. I know that lobster mac and cheese, I know. Look at it back there, y'all, it is ridiculous. All right, so the surf and turf option, you can um, have it broiled, which is, you know, without um, anything extra on it, usually the typical way a lobster is cooked, just under the broiler, or their signature, which is slightly battered and flash fried. This was my first time having fried lobster. I don't know if anybody has, but what they do is they peel the whole shell off. So all you have is the little tail. They batter it. And then the flash fry is literally just a quick dunk and out. So it doesn't stay cooking in that uh, fried grease. It was excellent. Honestly, um, it was rich. It was very, very good. Next time I'll probably just get regular lobster, but I wanted to try it with Wilbert says and steak. This might have been the best meal you've had in these reviews. You would eat all of it. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Kia says everything looks amazing. I know. I know, y'all. So then this is the so the shareable sides over here. So this is the lobster mac and cheese. So this is their mac and cheese with gouda. So you can see how it's served. So your entree, just the steak, comes on its own plate, and then they bring you a shareable mac and cheese. So again, you would use the spoon, serve some onto your plate with a big old lobster tail cut up in the mac and cheese, and then green beans also um, uh, shareable. Um, and then there's a baked potato over there. I didn't have baked potato. I had a few bites of mac and cheese, but you all can see from the bread to the crab cake to the salad, to the steak, to the lobster, to the lobster mac and cheese. Oh my gosh, it's just incredible. And the service was excellent. The food was incredible. Here's another picture for you all. Ah, oh, I took one with the flash for you so you can see. So I had my steak medium. This is not the best picture. It's a little fuzzy, but you can see my um, lobster. And then there's your mac and cheese. I made a little spill. I should have had my crab cake closer, my plate closer. So that's on me. But yes, fresh flown in lobster. And this was a peppercorn sauce that they recommended with the steak. I did get it. It was incredible. But honestly, the steak had so much flavor on its own. You didn't need, you don't need any sauce. You don't need any sauce. It, it was just incredible. Ah, oh, so yes, yes, yes. So the second lemon drop has come, slowing down, enjoying it with the meal. All right, so just took, uh, as the restaurant was filling up. Uh, so here's a picture of the table side. So this is uh, not me, as you can see, but uh, this, um, this table had ordered the table side salad. So uh, I believe you can see there's a cart here and notice he has the little burner kind of like when I cook for you all, they have the lemon drop too. 
but uh, you can see the skillet and then you can see the bowl here. So they have the fresh greens and everything. And this is where they make the dressing, uh, a warm glaze that they drizzle on. So just showing you all what table side service. Oh, I zoomed in. So you can see they're putting everything in there and they're going to uh, serve it up. So that's your table side uh, dressing. Um, another table had the, the steak tartar, but just showing you all. All right. And the, as if that weren't enough. And did I want anything else? <laughs> Wilbur said I made Team Greedy proud. I know y'all. Oh my goodness. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It sounds good. Yummy. <sighs> Last thing to look at, and then we're almost done, is dessert. Okay. So the dessert menu, of course, they packed up everything two bags. I tasted everything. It was exquisite. They asked if we wanted dessert. It was for research purposes. Okay. Um, so they brought the dessert menu out so you all can see, did I get, okay. So I'll show you all here. I want to know what you all would have. So these are the dessert options. They have a creme brulee, their signature dish, which is the white chocolate banana cream pie, warm rum raisin bread pudding, chocolate toffee crunch pie, New York style cheesecake, or ice cream or sorbet. And then of course they have all of your coffee and tea. So what are you all getting for dessert? <laughs> I made y'all proud. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Mm. So I'd love to know what dessert you all are getting since I made you so proud. Oh my goodness. Who knew my greed? This is a good thing. This is a good thing. So I did order coffee. Ah. All right. So, oh yeah. So I put some cream in my coffee. Yes, yes, yes. I got a dessert with coffee. It was so, so good. Excellent coffee after dinner. Ah, uh, oh, Lord, yes, Lord, a woman after my own heart here for the chocolate toffee crunch. And yes, that is what I got. Let me see if I can get, oh, I was still on slow motion. So this is a chocolate silk pie Okay, I know this is a little bit uh, bright, but it is an Oreo crust. So this crust is Oreos. And then the pie itself is a chocolate silk pie. And then it has ice cream and the ice cream is coffee flavored. And then the crunch pieces on the top are toffee crunch drizzled with caramel. <laughs> so good. <sighs> so good. Just so good. Oh my gosh, y'all. So yeah, let's see if there's anything else. That was dessert. Just took a couple bites of it and... Um, finished the ice cream and, and packed up the dessert. I know, Randy. I know. I know. Do we need to go back, Randy? <laughs> We're already going to go to, um, what's it called? Uh, brunch. Let me know if I need to take you to Chops. Randy is going to be coming for 4th of July. But yes, you all, this was my dessert. I really wanted to get their signature if I go back, that banana cream pie is what is uh, calling my name. Randy says, oh, I mean, sorry, Kia says, oh my goodness, that sounds so good. I'll have one of those too. I know. I asked for a recommendation. Randy says, ready when you are. Okay. I'll have to make reservations. We'll have to go back to Chops. Wilbert says, I would have needed a bed after that meal. I did, y'all. This, it was a lot. It was a lot. I kind of slightly felt like I overdid it. Came back with two bags because I literally just took a couple bites of everything. Um, it was incredible and such good quality. It was incredible, y'all. 
Absolutely incredible. So I finished up with my coffee. Y'all know how I like it, light and sweet. Yes, 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 yes. So it was so good. It was so, so good. All right. So I did. <laughs> Y'all know how I do. I did take you to the ladies. Um, so just, um, let's see. It's actually a very different decor inside. Kind of, um, let me see the dress, marble. Uh, a little bit more modern, very bright, so you all can see uh, the ladies. I always take you in there, you know, inquiring minds want to know. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Just the bar. All right. Some um, fancy or some, what is it? Um, famous people in the elevator. I don't know who any of these people are, but in the elevator going up, different people that had eaten there. Maybe y'all know who they are. Um, and then waiting for valet. The sun is setting. It's a beautiful night. Linda says, it all looks so good. When ordering at this type of restaurant, is it considered good etiquette to order the portion size so one can realistically eat or order for best value per ounce? I never know. Let me make sure I understand. Is it good etiquette to order the portion size that you can eat or order for the best value? And I think what you mean here is, should you order more so that you can get like extra that you can eat later? At this type of restaurant, all of the sides are serving, I'm sorry, sharing size. So you're going to get uh, two size servings of, uh, two portion servings of lobster mac and cheese. I would just say if you're being treated, then you should order the size that you can eat um, to enjoy. Um, I just want to make sure I'm answering the question. We did have doggy bags to go. You might have seen them on the table. Every, every time a new course came out, they were packing the old course um, nicely. Um, ideal for me is like a tasting menu. If I could have two to three bites of everything, that would be great. Um, but yes, I would order what you can actually eat. But this restaurant is a little bit different. I hope I answered your question. If not, Linda, uh, inbox me. I know you're in, the, is it the Instagram or the Patreon? Uh, inbox me and I will ask my etiquette teacher on Wednesday. What does Wilbert say? How can you remain elegant with such good food? You don't eat all of it. Take three doggy bags. The rule doesn't exist for good food. Yeah, I don't know if you saw on the table, they packed everything and they had um, bags uh, to go. Uh, I'll see if I can find it for you. But um, we left waiting for um, uh, valet, and uh, there's the stairs upstairs or uh, the elevator to go up to Chops. So it was a great, great, great. There's the lobster bar. Great experience. All right. So you can see here, this is what I came home with. <laughs> Shout out to the kitchen counter. Uh, two big bags of everything. Uh, we, we didn't finish anything. We did not finish anything. So yeah, the point I'm making here, so obviously, you know, I came home with to go, um, but because the staff offered to pack it up and um, my dining companion said, absolutely get whatever you like. The etiquette rule is just really, you know, just watch your host if um, that's really the rule of thumb. You know, if they're ordering something small and simple, then you do the same. All right, you do the same. All right, I think that's uh, that's it. I warmed it up today, and uh, yeah. All right, y'all. So that was Chops Lobster Bar. <laughs> Linda says, thank you for taking us along. You're welcome. I'm glad you all like the dining documentaries. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I haven't eaten out in a while. Um, what does Wilbert say? The big question is, are you going to share with the boys? No, they're at their dad's and I made sure. So that's all I ate today, y'all, was my leftovers. I didn't even take everything home, split it in half. I had the steak, the lobster tail, the crab cake, and um, I didn't have the mac and cheese. It was...
it's too much. Um, but yeah, no, 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 no. The boys will get their own jobs and pay for their own luxury meals. But trust me, these boys eat well. I have taken them. And if mom wanted something like this for Mother's Day, I would take them. Speaking of mom, Kia says, thank you for sharing with us, Maggie. I love this stuff. I'm so glad you love it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for liking the lives. Thank you for uh, the uh, compliments. I'm not ignoring the TikTok feed. Um, I'm here. Um, if you all want to see the screen share, it's Facebook and YouTube. Sorry, I'm new to TikTok. And also the TikTok comments, sometimes they uh, pop up and then they go away. So I'll scroll back and make sure that I answer everything as we close out. Uh, speaking of mom, tomorrow, um, I'll be cooking with Nana. You all know mom. I am the daughter of a retired home science teacher. So tomorrow, I think it'll be around 1 p.m. Eastern. Mom is coming back. We're going to be making African food, rice and soup. So Excuse me, if you want to see Maggie as the student, you want to watch me learn from the best, it'll be me and mom tomorrow. What does Lauren say? Thank you, Maggie. I would choose a chocolate crunch pie only if offered. Absolutely. I was offered dessert. I had it. It was excellent. Randy, when we go back, I'm going to get their signature banana cream pie. Oh, I always like when they say this is what we're known for. I always like getting what they're known for, but I was feeling greedy and wanted the chocolate. So I'm going to close out with the commercial, um, then I'll check the comments, and then I will let you all have your evening. All About the Max says, thanks, Maggie. I always look forward to your lives when I'm able to catch them. They're calming. Thank you. Randy is taking notes. Absolutely. I'm going to put the link to the um, restaurant. I think I put it in the description, but I'm going to put that in here for you, Randy. There you go. You, you all can see the menu for yourself and let me know what you'd like. We'll have to go uh, back to chops when you're here. Thank you all for helping me monetize my passion for food. Um, clearly, I love to eat and usually I'm cooking, but when I'm not cooking, I take you all on dining documentaries like this. So if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing because I do stream for you just about every day. If you want to know how I got monetized so quickly, I do have a course. Link is in the description. My guide to monetization walks you through everything I did to get monetized in four months. My YouTube channel is extra income for me, and I appreciate it so much. It pays for private school, and I am grateful. Uh, most new YouTube channels take a year to get monetized, so if you want to know what I did, I put it in the course. You can preview it for free. Uh, it's $50. You have lifetime access, and I've been given really good feedback fact that it's great for beginners. So if you don't know how you can make income on YouTube, uh, or if you have a channel and you're not monetized yet, you can check it out. Um, maybe it would be helpful for you. If you want to join the Maggie memberships, you get the course for free or my Patreon at the $5 level, you get the course for free. I also have a cookbook. Shout out to the cookbook. Um, that's included in the memberships or the $5 Patreon. My cookbook is a digital download, and that means that you get it immediately. It's $20 with a $5 coupon. Um, and you can either read the um, recipe or there's a video of me making it. So you'll be able to see that. We're going to update the pictures and videos. But if you have the original copy, you will get the updated copy for free. So if you're interested in the cookbook, that is an option uh, for you. Ah, yeah. Shout out to the cruise. Lauren is reminding us if you all are interested in coming on the cruise with me um, and your other scholars, you can put your two hundred. $100 deposit down and then pay the balance by September. We will be sailing to the Bahamas November 27th on Royal Caribbean. I am so excited. Thank you again to Mr. Option One. Oh, wrong one. Thank you again to Mr. Option One for um, sponsoring and Christopher Williams for sponsoring. You all are so incredibly, incredibly generous uh, to me. So we talked about community, course, cookbook. Um, yeah, if you want to book a Maggie meeting, if you want to pick my brain, I do consults. You can book 30 minutes or an hour. Link is in the description. Um, 
let's see is there anything else i think we've got everything all right so i'm going to check over here tiktok because i've been ignoring them two new messages thank you all so much for being here thank you for the support boss twin thank you for liking the live thank you for the compliment deck guy i'm not ignoring you mon you you eat for oh i don't understand you eat it for days thank you all so much um Sounds good. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Janet. Thank you all for the likes. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for all of the support. Hello, Miss Maxwell from North Carolina. Ah, Jack says that the beef is grass fed. For he so here's what we learned about that Wagyu. It's grass fed only and they treat them like kings. That's why that uh, beef is so exquisite. They're not fed corn. They're fed a natural diet. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's the best beef you can get. Thank you, Jack, for the comp comments. I appreciate you all so much. And shout out to the boy moms. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss. I will be cooking tomorrow. So I'll be in the kitchen. If you want to see me in the kitchen with mom, um, stay tuned. We'll be making African food. So Husa. All right, TikTok, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate it. All right, Instagram, thank you all so much for being here. Hopefully I saw everyone. I'm just scrolling back, making sure I didn't miss anybody. I appreciate you all so much for helping my channel to grow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Class is dismissed. I'll be back live tomorrow uh, around 1 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> thank you, class is dismissed. All right, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Thank you all so much for being here. You have made my evening such a joy, and I appreciate you. Thank you to the stream sponsor, Mr. Option One. Thank you to The Quiet Storm, and thank you to Ron Alexander. I appreciate you all. Class is dismissed. <laughs>